Hello and welcome to this online service brought to you by the Methodist churches of Bushy and Oxy, Cutler's Park and St Andrew's Bushy Heath. In our worship today we're focusing on the work of Christian aid and exploring what life is like for those who feel the effects of climate change firsthand in Kenya. Christian aid relies on donations to support its valuable work so if you would like to contribute towards their efforts to provide reliable sources of water for these communities, details of how you can do this are on our church website and in the weekly news sheet. And now let's start our service with a prayer. Come and celebrate our common home as we gather with the family of humanity, with the mountains, islands and deserts, we honour the glory of God in creation. With the lakes, rivers and seas, we come to the source of living water. With the land, its soil, seeds and sustenance, we give thanks for God's generous provision. With the forests of great trees, the lungs of the planet, we will sing with joy and clap our hands. We join with the whole of creation inspired by those who have gone before and the prophetic voices of today, we dare to praise and pray for another possible world. To the glory of God. Amen. Kwa I 
no kweda na ambita bisi ni schoolu na i atu 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 na ma atu atu na koti ni. Ndoza zina kesi ana ina. Ela wewe tu yenyi ni kala nu mesi. Na ina kala diwa ba ni nyoka si maitu ni maitu e wewe zina kala tani nyoka ku. Sindi umata na ilo kwa natu tu kwa ya tangu kuu usi kibuto masi ya kuasa. Lakini ngai andeve siya o ino akwa tevina. Kita akan kasih anak kita ini. Oh itu kayu yang di sana. Di sana ni best. Engkau kau yang kau doa ayahnya hanya kibu. Nua ni tengkau ni best. Isu kau. Kita ni gua ni muda angkau. Kau nak tak kembali jauh nunggu amu yo. Tu suku matu no ni apa? No berkibeti. Ina muda sedih di mian kau ni. Asih deh deh sia. Nindi o matungi a mover a que as vangas ia me que nessa angiasia para um beijo se não me vangas ia ongele levo Boya, ni boya si ana si a kasi kare na mubo kola si, angi boya mbua, iwi andwe zekela mtu wa kuato kaindo. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. Listen to the Lord's case against Israel. Arise, O Lord, and present your case. Let the mountains and the hills hear what you say. You, mountains, you everlasting foundations of the earth, listen to the Lord's case. The Lord has a case against his people. He is going to bring an accusation against Israel. The Lord says, My people, what have I done to you? How have I been a burden to you? Answer me. I brought you out of Egypt. I rescued you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron and Miriam to lead you. My people, remember what King Balak of Moab planned to do to you and how Balaam, son of Beor, answered him. Remember the things that happened on the way from the camp at Acacia to Gilgal. Remember these things and you will realize what I did in order to save you. What shall I bring to the Lord, the God of heaven, when I come to worship him? Shall I bring the best calves to burn as an offering to him? Will the Lord be pleased if I bring him thousands of sheep or endless streams of olive oil? Shall I offer him my firstborn child to pay for my sins? No, the Lord has told us what is good. What he requires of us is this, to do what is just, to show constant love and to live in humble fellowship with our God. It is wise to fear the Lord. He calls to the city, 
Listen, you people who assemble in the city. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. As my Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learnt from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Every spring we plant a variety of seeds and seedlings in the garden and encourage our kids to nurture their growth all the way through the summer. If all goes well, then a season of mixed salad awaits us all and while that may not be the children's favourite meal, like many other parents, I assure them it is good for them. And of course it is. And not just the eating of their greens. There's much to learn from the disciplines of attentive care that monitors growth and harvests the fruit. One lesson from this basic introduction to horticulture is that too much water can be as bad as giving plants too little. You can drown tomatoes as easily as kill them in soil that is parched and dry. 
and between too much and too little, they often discover the joy of having just enough. And while none of this cultivation is remotely a matter of life and death for our family, the garden experience reads like a mini parable of the devastating changes that are happening increasingly around the world. In places like Kenya, cultivating crops amidst extreme and erratic weather patterns is a matter of life and death. Too much water can sweep away crops in torrential floods, while elsewhere too little means the land is cracked in desperate drought. Communities such as those featured in this year's Christian Aid Week depend on reliable, regulated water supplies for their livestock, their crops and their livelihoods. You may already have heard the story of Rose who lives in Kitui County, where the chaos of climate change has devastated the growth of beans and maize and left her land and her family thirsty, hungry and poor. There is sometimes too much, there is often too little, but rarely, it seems, is there just enough. And for Rose, perhaps one regular refrain from those psalms of lament might become her daily prayer, How long, O Lord, how long before what we have is enough and what we have is just? How long before there is justice and enough? However, not far away, a contrasting story can be told by Florence. Thanks to donations from supporters of Christian aid and the work of local partners, she has built a small dam beside her farm, enough to gather the rains where they might otherwise overwhelm, retaining sufficient irrigation for the weeks when there isn't a cloud in the sky. And with that dependable source of water, Florence can grow tomatoes and onions and chilies on her farm. Her family can eat their own healthy vegetables. She can keep bees and she can sell their golden honey. And so Florence can join her voice with the psalm that is set for us today. She can sing a new song unto the Lord, for God has done indeed great things. With her, the rivers and mountains, and indeed that dam of fresh, plentiful water, can sing before the Lord who judges the world in righteousness. And surely such a God will declare, this is justice, this is enough. This farm is just and enough, a sign of grace, an echo of God's kingdom song, finding its home upon the earth. Florence's farm is an echo, too, of the astounding events we read of today in the book of Acts. Peter has had this epiphany of God's equality and God's inclusivity. Heaven has revealed in a dream the mind-blowing truth that Gentiles are now as welcome as Jews in the family of God. And to underline the point, just as Peter is preaching, the gift of the Holy Spirit comes upon the very people he would have discounted but a day before. These Gentiles are speaking in tongues and praising God. And as they receive the baptism of God's Holy Spirit, Peter glimpses just how generous and hospitable it is. And in response to these events, he asks the crowd, can anyone keep these people? from being baptised with water. In other words, can anyone deny them the opportunity of the sacrament to make an outward visible sign of this inward invisible transforming grace? And for these Gentiles, as with people like Rose and Florence, the tangible presence of water makes visible the work of the Holy Spirit in their midst. It reinforces the importance of the physical, the embodied, the earthly life, blessed indeed by the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. You know, perhaps the astounding thing from this scripture today is not just that the Spirit is poured out upon Gentiles, but maybe that it can be just as holy an act to drench a thirsty land with water from a dam as it is to sprinkle blessing on a baby's head or immerse a believer in the waters at their baptism. And here is the challenge for many of us who often confine our understanding of the Holy Spirit to the boundaries of the church. For surely the Holy Spirit is at work within our congregations, but yet, as theologian Jürgen Moltmann says, we need to experience that the life-giving spirit in the faith of the heart and in the society of love leads us beyond the limits of the church 
to the rediscovery of that same spirit in nature, in plants, in animals and in the ecosystems of the earth. And if that is so, then echoing Peter, how can anyone withhold the water needed for thirsty animals, for thirsty crops and for thirsty people across the world? There ought to be enough. It should be just. And if it isn't, then Multiman continues, people who truly affirm and love life will take up the struggle against violence and injustice because they refuse to get used to it. Where life isn't just, where there isn't enough, Christians are called to refuse to get used to it. If the water of baptism is symbolic of new life, then so too is the water within Florence's dam. It too is a sign of the spirit and the coming of the kingdom. For Florence and those who helped her, they defied how things were and refused to get used to what wasn't enough and what simply wasn't just. They discovered that great truth of what the poet Alice Walker says, that resistance can be the secret of our joy. And that secret of joy is something that Jesus plainly comprehended even as he stood on the threshold of great suffering. Resisting the powers of betrayal and death, he finishes his farewell message to his friends, telling them, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My joy in you and your joy complete. Jesus knew it was for the joy set before him that he despised the shame and endured the cross. And despite the suffering of Good Friday and despite the silence of Holy Saturday, this is a joy that believes that Sunday and resurrection is coming. And despite the suffering of climate chaos and despite the silence of many in power, this is a joy that believes the kingdom is coming, that trusts in the spirit, that works for change. This is a joy that refuses to get used to all that is not enough and all that is not just. And I know the complexities of issues like this can sound like a flood of impossible tasks. I understand how in times like now we might all be experiencing a drought of encouragement, but with God there is always enough and more. As we begin this week for Christian Aid, the challenges both personal and communal, both local and global are indeed great, but so too is the joy that is set before us. So too is the abundance of life in the Spirit to resist injustice, to overcome poverty, to nurture creation, to act in these ways, even with small or faltering steps. This surely is a sign of our love for God, of our love for God's people, of our love for God's creation. These things are a sign of our obedience to heaven, our faithfulness to Christ, our fellowship in the Spirit. These things can become the secret of our joy. And scripture assures us that even in the struggle, these commands of God will be far from burdensome. Resistance will not be futile. Victory will come. The world will have enough and nations will finally be just. This Christian Aid Week, we can join in the struggle of communities with Rose. We can celebrate the changes in communities with Florence if we make that choice. If we refuse to get used to the way the world is, if we commit to struggle for all it might be, for a world that is just and an earth with enough, if we follow Jesus, if we live in the Spirit, then the kingdom will be discovered among us. If we make that choice, our joy will be complete in Christ and Christ's joy will be complete in us. What an amazing woman Florence is. I love Florence and I love her story. It's one of hope and determination. She could have given in and let life take over, but she was determined to make a difference, not just for her, but for those around her. We can't imagine what it's like to walk hours to just draw water. We turn a tap on and it's there. 
But the great thing is that for just £50, a mud or an earth dam was built. And now Florence's village has water, clean, life-giving water. And this Christian Aid Week, we're hoping to raise £500. And that £500 could build 10 of those dams for villagers in Kenya or provide 100 taps that give life giving clean water. Ways that you can give are listed at the end of this service. Just find out how you can make a difference this Christian Aid Week. Let's share with Florence and do our bit to make the world a better place. Thanks for your contribution. Thanks for your gift this Christian Aid Week. Great God, who makes the sun to rise and opens the heavens, hear the cry of the people, people who sow in hope for rain but reap only despair. Hear the cry of the people, people seeking shelter from the storm, their homes and hopes submerged. Hear the cry of the people. When creation is heating back with rage and resistance, give us hope grant us salvation. Give us a new relationship with creation, with reverence to tend this gift from you, and say once again of the earth and all you created, it is good. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.
thank you for joining us on this christian aid week thank you for tuning in and thanks to all those who've taken part and thanks to ken for putting it all together next week we're in church so there'll be no online service but in june we've got two services online the second and the fourth sundays the theme for those Sundays are going to be stained glass windows, the stories behind and the beauty of stained glass. And if you've got some pictures, some photographs of your favourite stained glass windows, then please do send them to me or onto one of the stewards and we'll feature those in those services in June. But a final blessing on this Christian Aid Sunday. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical time. And may the blessing of God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and all creation this day and for the future to come. Amen. Have a great week till next week. Take care, be careful and God bless. Bye.